In seventh grade, I walked into Mr. DeMello's social studies class, and he had a map hanging upside down in the back of his classroom. And I walked in, and I looked at the map, and I looked at Mr. DeMello, and I said, in my little seventh grade vo voice, um, I said, Mr. DeMello, why is your map upside down? And uh, the first day of class, he blew my little seventh grade mind when he looked down, and he said, is it? which probably at the time I didn't really experience the full magnitude of that. Um, but his point was, hey, we're this like little dust-sized particle floating around on a little blue marble in this very, very big space. What's upside down other than the fact that we chose to draw a picture of where we live in a particular format so that people could recognize it. But if you hadn't noticed, there's a map upside down on my wall. This map has followed me from a home office in Asheville to a home office in Pittsburgh to a downtown office in Pittsburgh, which I didn't really like. The commute was not ideal to right now an office space that's uh, an eight minute walk from my house on the sixth floor of this um, building. And so there are two reasons I hung it upside down. One is partially because Mr. DeMello. Two, uh, when I first got this map off of Etsy, I think, um, when I went to hang it, I wasn't paying attention, and <laughs> I hung the first panel upside down. And hanging a three-panel thing is like just kind of annoying, actually, for a perfectionist or a recovering perfectionist. And so hanging maps uh, a little bit annoying. And so when I realized it was upside down, I remembered that moment in Mr. DeMello's class. And seeing that I knew it was going to be in the background of many videos and that I was going to walk in and see it every single day, I decided to leave it. And now my, I guess my third reason for keeping it upside down is as a reminder that I do not get to choose and we do not get to choose what happens to us in the world, but we do always have a choice of how we react to that, right? And I think our world is shapeable, malleable, moldable. There are things that are beyond just an individual's control, um, but our response to any given situation. And so when I walk in, uh, for me, when I walk in and I'm feeling tired, burnt out, et cetera, it's a reminder that I have a choice with what I do with that. Now, <laughs> if you hang a upside down map in your house or set it as your computer background after uh, watching this video, I can't promise it's gonna stave off burnout um, all the time, but I do think the perspective is really empowering to realize that we do not choose what happens to us, but we do always get to choose how we react and respond. And credit for, uh, you know, there's probably some very wise ancient people who came up with that idea. But uh, Eric Tyler, a mentor in my life, who's the author of a book called, oh my goodness, can I find it? Uh, the Best Advice So Far. Um, and I think somewhere around here, aha, there you go, right on the back cover. There is the statement, you always have a choice. Um, he gave me that phrase multiple times throughout our relationship, and we're still uh, escalated from mentor to friend now. Um, but when I, freshman year of college, had my whole life pulled out in, from underneath me and realized, oh my goodness, I don't know what I want to do with my life, he reminded me, you always have a choice. Um, and it was really powerful to um, have that idea in a moment when I felt like I didn't have a choice or my choices felt extremely limited or I felt like I was being pushed around or controlled. And if you've ever worked in an organization, you've probably felt like you were being pushed around at some point or feeling like a cog in the wheel or something. And so um, remembering you don't choose what happens to you, but you do get to choose what you do next. All right. That's why I hang my map upside down. Thank you for asking. <laughs>